Me and rappers, we have a similar mindset. We think similar ways. <laughs> One was entitled, Will You Help Me Repair My Door? Will you help me repair my door? Do, 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 do. Smashing Security, episode 316 of Musk and Afro Man with Carol Terrio and Graham Cluley. Hello, hello, and welcome to Smashing Security, episode 316. My name's Graham Cluley. And I'm Carol Terrio. And Carol, we're joined this week by. No one. No one at all, but there's a good reason, isn't there? Yes, it's April, and uh, April is a busy month for us for many reasons. I've even had to move Sticky Pickles to a bi-monthly... Oh my goodness. ...you know, publishing segment, yeah. because there's a lot going on. We will have guests this month, don't worry, but uh, today you have just the two of us, intimate. Yes, because I'm giving a talk this week, you're doing things this week, so it's a little bit easier. Mm-hmm. Anyway, better get on with it. We should. But before we kick off, let's thank this week's sponsors, Bitwarden, Collide and Dorata. It's their support that helps give you this show for free. Now, coming up on today's show, Graham, what do you got? I'm going to be taking you back to school. And I'm going to be talking about a spat between a Grammy-nominated artist and his local cops. All this and much more coming up on this episode of Smashing Security. Now, Chum Chum, as you know, and as some of our listeners will know, I live in the countryside. Says for anyone who lives in Canada or America, he does not live in the countryside. He lives in a <laughs> suburb that has a few trees. And a few sheep. But it's far enough to not be able to get a broadband cable connection to my house. And it turns out not to be able to get a reliable mobile data signal either. And it's caused all sorts of difficulties over the years. And you still signed the lease, <laughs> despite being a podcast host. Yes. <laughs> so it's caused all kinds of difficulties when wanting to record over the internet a podcast. And as regular listeners may recall, it was a past pick of the week of mine that I eventually solved the problem by investing in Starlink. Giving money to a very responsible uh, individual. Yeah, yeah. Well, anyway, so it turned out Elon Musk's low Earth orbit satellites um, were the best way for me to beam data in and out of my abode. Up and down they go to a satellite via a dish in the back garden, and it actually gives me pretty incredible internet access. Uh, I'm in, I'm really impressed by it. Cool. Someone else is impressed is my son because it means he can play video games with his mates online, and we we don't take this for granted. So when we get up in the morning, we Never forget what it was like not to have decent internet access. And so we we hold a little prayer meeting. We go, oh, thank you very much, Elon Musk, for everything that you have done for us. I knew you had a bromance with him. Yeah, you love him. You always have. Only in the case of Starlink, I do think is rather wonderful. Now, it turns out I am not the only person who is worshipping Elon Musk. Everyone, you heard him. He admits he worships Elon (laughs) Musk. We have it on recording. But for different reason, for different reason, there is a men's group, for instance, in Bangalore, India. And um, they um, have recently been filmed worshipping at the feet of a picture of Elon Musk. In fact, there's a little bit of video here. I'll put a link in the show notes where you can check it out. Look, check this out. Now, what you're seeing there are people chanting their own versions of Sanskrit mantras, which loosely translate to salutations to Elon Musk, salutations to Twitter, and salutations to evicting feminists from the Twitter platform. (laughs) Are you... Okay. This could be misinformation because as far as I know, your Sanskrit mantra knowledge is pretty uh, basic at oh. best. Well, well, this particular group um, have a less than complimentary view on feminists. They've previously said that they are intellectually challenged with very less academic ground in than them. They're very ungrateful people who aren't looking after men properly. And uh, the media have reported on this. They've been filmed doing all their prayers to Elon Musk. And uh, the thing is, this particular group were banned from Twitter. But then, of course, last year, Elon Musk took over Twitter, which meant he said, 
Come on back in, boys. Open the floodgates. Let's see what happens. <laughs> You're sort of people we want in here. After my, my former employees, that woke bunch, he said, who kicked you all out. No, ah, come on in. Come on in. Free speech and all the rest of it. So um, so they're very happy to be back on Twitter. Now, they're not the only Elon Musk fans out there other than me. There's also a lady called Dr. Jan McGee. And she is the subject of my story today. Dr. Jan McGee. Another Elon lover. Is the principal of a STEM school. STEM is like science and technology and engineering. Math and, and engineering, yeah. Is, it, yeah. is it all that kind of thing? Right. Okay. The school is called the Burn Science and Technology Charter in Oak Hill, which is uh, in somewhere in Florida. Okay. She's the big cheese. The head honcho, the fat cat, yeah. the big enchilada, the grand poobah, the numero uno. She is the big one. I don't know why you have to call her names. No, no this, is, this is probably what it says on her business card, right? This right. Is, this is what it is. It right. doesn't just say principal. It, she's a big deal. And she's been working at Burns Science and Technology um, since it was founded uh, as a school. Uh, you know, she's been there about 12 years. And she's helped make it a huge success. Mm -hmm. This school has an A rating, which is obviously the best rating you can have. And there's a long waiting list to get through its door if you want to become a student at it. And she's really driven it forward. And she's really been interested for years in teaming up with tech companies in the Florida area who might invest in the school, help it grow, etc. Guess who's top of her list? Uh, someone who had a lot, a lot of wonga at some point. <laughs> Elon Musk. Is he based in Florida? I think part of his space activity maybe is based in Florida. Oh, yes, of course it would be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There seems to be a lot of space expertise. You know, I, I get that. I'm sure she's not the only uh, principal that would like to do something like that. So, you know. Right. And he's obviously someone who's got a few quid spare. You'd think, you know, he's probably a bit flash with the cash. He may sometimes make sometimes rash decisions. Throw a bit of money here, throw a bit of money there. Dr. Jan has made no secret of this. She thinks Elon Musk is Amazing. Yeah, like you do. No, 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 no. Well, st steady on there, steady on there, because I'm not a huge fan of Elon Musk, actually. You said you worshipped him. We all heard it. Only because he's given us internet access where I live. There's no other reason. I think he's a fairly, from what I've seen, fairly odious human being. Mm. But anyway, what do you know? Dr. Jan gets contacted by Elon Musk. She's been saying for years she wants, she'd like nothing more than to partner up with him to advance the school's fortunes. Then, bong, up in her email, pops Elon Musk. Okay. They begin to chit. They begin to chat. There's chitting and chatting and chotting going on. They're having a great time. <laughs> Jesus Christ. All this chit chat is with the aim of working out some kind of relationship between Musk's companies and his wealth and the school by Dr. Jack. Now, there are some who are a little bit sceptical during this four-month conversation. And by some, what I mean is other people at work at the school, because, of course, Dr. Jan, she comes running into the uh, into the staff room. Hey, everybody. Allegedly. She comes running in, saying, oh, my goodness, I've been speaking to Elon Musk. It's all wonderful. You know, we're going to do I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. She's got her coffee. She's got her patches on her elbows. She's got all that teacher stuff going on. Did anyone say, should we just double-check that it's really Elon Musk? Oh, Apparently so. Apparently, oh, great, good. some of them have dared to suggest to Dr. Jan that she might want to be a little bit careful mm -hmm. before she gets into metaphorical bed with Elon Musk. Maybe he isn't entirely trustworthy. Maybe if it's the real Elon Musk, it's not entirely trustworthy. I don't know. I haven't said that. Well, I did, but I didn't mean that. <laughs> Dr. Jan won't have any of it. And so... Despite all the warnings from her colleagues, remember, she's the principal of the school. She writes a cheque. Dr. Jan McGee writes a cheque, believing that the person she's been speaking to is Musk and believing that Musk has pledged to match the funds. So she's going to write him a cheque for $100,000. Whoa, don't schools have boards? Yes. They do. But how can she write a check on her own? Oh, wait, this is the whole thing. This okay, is the whole okay, thing, okay. This, is the, this is the thing, right? 
She's writing this check and she believes that she's going to get several million dollars in return, right? She just has to make some sort of, I don't know why. I don't know why. Does she really believe that? Do you know that? Or are you just making that up? This is what she believed was happening. She believed she was making the donation. Now, at her school, you're absolutely right. There is a school board of governors or whatever. Yes. Trustees. Yeah. She, as a principal, as the high school principal, is only allowed to write checks from the school's account of up to $50,000. Yeah. Without board approval. This high school principal, because she's chatting to Elon Musk, decided to write one for $100,000. So can I just understand mm-hmm. something? So what happened? Musk chats her up, Musk, quote unquote, chats her up and says, yep. oh, we'd love to, you know, help you out with your stuff. Write me a check. <laughs> right. I don't understand. Right. Like write me a check for a hundred grand. And <sighs> it's it's curious, isn't it? It's curious because if if <laughs> if you're going to get million, it's like, well, what, what, why do I have to do that? Handling fees, Twitter investment. Maybe Amber Heard has run off with his wallet. Who knows? <laughs> something something has happened. Can you just tide me over? I haven't got enough for the rocket fuel this month. Who knows what? But somehow he convinces her to write a check for a hundred thousand dollars, and she believes she's going to get her school millions in return. But she didn't ask permission from the board, probably because she knew the board included people who'd heard about this Musk plan and were somewhat hmm, sceptical as to what was going on. So she didn't have permission. She wrote the check. Yeah. Someone at the school then got wind of that she'd done this, the school's business manager. It's amazing that someone can spend a hundred grand in a school and no one noticed. Like there should be alarm bells that go off everywhere. Well, right? Someone tipped off somebody or an alarm bell went off or something happened. The school's business manager jumped in. He leapt in a bit like Kevin Costner in The Bodyguard with Whitney Houston, jumping in the way of a bullet being shot by some crazed fan. Right. It's a bit like that. So he jumps in, leaps in, and he managed to stop the check before it cleared. And then, of course, there's all the big post-mortem because the board get together and the teachers get together and they say, what the bloody hell is the head doing here? Why is she doing this? There's a big school meeting. They took a freaking while. <laughs> Like there must have been quite a few warning signs before this that all was not all right with Dr. Jan McGee. Apparently they had been saying to her over a protracted period of time, "Uh, we don't think that's a good idea, but for whatever reason, she went on and did it anyway. There was a school meeting which has been televised. Uh, We might be able to link to it in the show notes where Dr. Jan apologised to the school board, the workers, the parents. She admitted she'd fallen for a scam. She said, and she said, I'm a very smart lady. I'm well educated. I fell for a scam. She said, grooming is when you talk to someone and you believe in them and they get you to trust them that this is really, really Mm -hmm. real. And so I fell for it. So she threw herself down at the mercy of these people. Thankfully, the money wasn't lost. She apologised. They weren't very forgiving. It turns out that some of her co-workers also said at the meeting, that they weren't really happy with her being at the helm. Maybe they'd lost some trust in her. Some of them described a toxic working environment. I imagine there was a bit of argy-bargy over the months over this Musk deal, and that may have caused some friction uh, between people. Three administrators threatened to quit, and eventually Dr. Jan offered her resignation. She walked out, accompanied by some applause, which I think was rather sardonic, um, her husband, who's also a teacher, he quit at the same time as well. It's all there on the video. People say only morons fall for a scam, right? Some people, well, some people say that. Some people think, well, you, how dumb can you be to fall for a scam like this? This is the principal of a school who fell for this, even though she was being warned for months and months that it was unlikely to be real. Graham, even influencers can fall for it. Influencers? Yes. Not just school principals. It takes all sorts. Anyone can fall for them. So is this, is this, a, are you thinking of someone even more impressive than a high school principal? Isn't, yes. is a social media influencer? <laughs> what do you mean even influencer? For example, influencer? for example, yes. you know, 
I just I don't know why you're making such a big deal about them being a school principal. It's not like they're like, you know, geniuses well, because they have all been trained. Them. They've been educated. You would expect them to be a, of a certain substance, wouldn't you? I would expect so. But what does substance have to do with being groomed and falling for a scam? I kind of agree with her on that front. She well, obviously, obviously yes, yeah, she it. did. But there were people all around her saying, uh, you really reckon so? But she, she went for it and it wasn't even her money. It was the school's money. I get all that, but presumably um, she's been there for 12 years. It just, it's kind of gross when someone does this rather than offering them help maybe first. They may say no to the help. You might be going, look, you need. So what, what help are you suggesting that she be offered then rather than being booted out? Well, I don't know. Maybe like therapy to find out where this obsession with Elon <laughs> Musk is going on or if, see see what why she would think he was such someone that would be so wonderful to her. Like what evidence does she have that he would be great, for example? <laughs> but no, but do you know what I mean? Like they just- You know what it. should actually happen? Elon Musk, right? He must Google his name to look for himself in news reports. He must find this story. Surely he is rich enough just for the lols and the giggles. To actually now come forward and say, actually, it was me. Oh, it wasn't him? Well, no, of course it wasn't him. <laughs> <laughs> no, you didn't say that. <laughs> but, but he could now offer $5 million for the school with the understanding that she has to be put back in charge. And maybe they call it the Elon Musk School for Technology and Science. <laughs> I'm not sure he's got $2 million to rub together at the moment, Graham. Oh, bless him. Bless him. You see, you do love him. Carol, what have you got for us this week? We have Joseph Edgar Foreman, okay? This guy is an American rapper, a singer, a songwriter, political activist, comedian, musician. That's at least what it says on his Wikipedia page. You know, people who say that they do all of these things, do they really do all of these things? That's like me saying, you know, can make toast or something or bake beans. You know, I don't say bake bean maker. I don't say... Maybe your profiles would be more interesting if you did. Well, maybe. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> and of course, I don't know this name. I didn't recognise this name, Joseph Edgar Foreman, because this guy had a stage name. And his okay. stage name was Afro, or is still Afro Man. Afro Man, okay. Afro Man. Mm-hmm. And this brought me back... Because out of all of his oeuvres, I'm sure there are many and many, there was one song that I remember playing at many parties that I went to in the early noughties. And it's entitled, Because I Got High. Because I Got High. Yes. Yes. It's because the lyrics are so ridiculous. Okay. So it starts like this. Okay. I've got the lyrics here. Can can you sing it to us? Uh, it would be the tune which already. Well, he's got a very deep voice, Afro man. Yeah, exactly. I'm thinking you can. And do he it. sounds exceptionally high oh. while he sings the song. So I don't know how to do that. Okay, but <laughs> I was going to clean my room until I got high. I was going to get up and find the broom, but then I got high. My room is still messed up, and I know why. Because I got high. Because I got high. Because I got high. And that's basically pretty similar. When you hear the original, you'll be like, oh, crawl, you did a good job there. It's like William Wordsworth, really, isn't it? That's very impressive. Well, if I think you should say that because it was nominated for the Grammy Awards for Best Rap Solo Performance in 2002. I didn't know that. So move over Bowie. (laughs) Bowie. Bowie's not a rapper. What am I talking about? No, I I was about to say. What what rap song did he do? (laughs) Anyway, as far as I know... Okay, this was his biggest hit. Okay, he did do other things in the last 20 years because he is a singer, songwriter, political activist, comedian, musician. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now let's fast forward to last year, August 2022. Afro man, a married guy, right? He lives out in Adams, Ohio, and he decides to go to Chicago, leaving his wife at home, you know, doing whatever. And all is fine and tickety-boo until bang, bang, bang. And they hear like, this is a raid. And the door gets rammed down, seven armed cops, I don't know if they were all armed, but seven cops, some armed uh, with what looks like machine guns of some sort, present a warrant to search Afro Man's house. I don't think they have machine guns, do they? I mean, well, America they're pretty, has a, you'll see They're the not video. giving machine guns to policemen now. You're going to have a chance to take a look and you tell me what they are. I don't know. I don't know very much. Okay, about. all right. Okay. And the reason is, is for drug possession, trafficking and kidnapping. That's what the warrant says. 
Oh. So they start their raid, searching through everything. Afro Man's wife whips out her phone to record what she can of the raid, catching glimpses of law enforcement officers involved. Yes. Because she wants to get their identity. And Afro Man's house also had some surveillance inside and outside, which captures uh, images of the raid and progress. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't know why people have surveillance in their homes, at, inside their homes. Well, for this kind of thing, that's why they have it, Crow. Because then they can go and sell it to YouTube or put it up on Snapchat or whatever the thing is, you know, yeah. TikTok. Yeah. They, they, I guess, you know, the cops go through everything. They bag and tag stuff to take away, including money they found, right? Because it could be tied to illegal activities. Yeah. And like they must have had some big lead or something because like these were seven cops, you know, and they have a warrant and they show up ready for resistance, you know, with guns and you know bulletproof vests and the whole nine yards. A tank. Yeah, I didn't everything. see the tank. I didn't see the tank. Okay. All right. But, okay. but following the raid, Adams County Prosecutor's Office said the officers had found no probative criminal evidence and that Afro Man faced absolutely no charges. Okay. All right. Curious. Okay. So scary experience, right? If this were me and I had done nothing wrong as far as I was concerned and my home gets raided with the door totally bashed in onto the floor... That'd be, that'd be terrible, wouldn't it? Like, you would be miffed. You would be miffed. Miffed is exactly the word I was right. thinking of. I would be miffed. You would be miffed, because who's cleaning all this shit up? I bet they don't send round someone with a dustpan and brush afterwards, no. do they? Who's who's paying for the damages, right? A vacuum cleaner, yeah. They could donate a few vacuum cleaner bags. That would be something. Did they wipe their feet on the way in? <laughs> Did they? I bet they didn't. I bet Did they, they put didn't. everything back exactly as it was? Yeah. And worse, Ugh. Afro Man says that when, you know, they finally dropped the charges in his cash, his monies were returned to him. Yeah. Right? From the cop shop post-raid, it was 400 bucks light. And that would matter to Afro Man because he hasn't had a hit since 2002. <laughs> well, I don't know. He may have had a marijuana hit. but <laughs> uh, yeah, Allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> allegedly. So, so frustrating. So, so what do you think Afro Man does to make this bitter pill a little bit sweeter? I'm going to think he takes the video footage and uses it in the music video for his new version, I Got High, which he's going to name. Oh, I'm trying to think of something which rhymes with high. Um. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're not that far off. Me and rappers, we have a similar mindset, so I'm not surprised. You know, we think similar ways. <laughs> so he does. He uses it in his creative endeavours. Right. He drops some songs, a trio of songs. So one was called Why You Disconnecting My Video Camera, which I don't <laughs> think needs much explanation. <laughs> Bit difficult to rhyme that one, I suspect. <laughs> One was entitled, Will You Help Me Repair My Door? Will you help me repair my door? (laughs) And one was called Lemon Pound Cake, referring to a cake that you can see under a cake cloche in the kitchen (laughs) being eyed by one of the cops during the raid. (laughs) <laughs> and there's actually an Insta post where he intimates that the cop took the cake as part of the raid, saying, quote, congratulations to police officer Pound Cake. Thank you for getting me 5.4 million hits on TikTok. I couldn't have done it without you, obviously. As you can see, all my Pound Cake is gone. Officer Pound Cake confiscated my Pound Cake. He said something happened to his body camera on the way to the evidence room. Lol. Um, is it allowed to republish video of policemen doing their job, albeit eating your cake, well, and, and putting it on the public internet? Because surely the police deserve some privacy. It's your video camera in your house. Yes, but it's someone else's face. It's just someone doing their job. I mean, there could be repercussions. Oh, do you don't think most of the internet is made up of people showing other people's faces? Well, <laughs> well maybe. Like, do you not, you know, come on. I feel sorry for PC Pound Cake. There are music videos composed entirely of the security camera recordings of the raid to accompany the songs. Would you like to see one of these babies? I would love to see one of these. Okay. Do you want to see the Pound Cake one, maybe? Because he sets it to a particular song. The Adams County Sheriff kicked down my door. 
Then I heard the glass break. <laughs> they found no kidnapping victims, just some lemon pound cake. Mama's lemon pound cake. It tastes so nice. It made the sheriff wanna put down his gun and cut him a slice. <laughs> Lemon pound cake, he wanna put down his glass. Lemon pound cake, <laughs> trending on TikTok. Lemon pound cake, under <laughs> the boardwalk, <laughs> down by the sea. Yeah, uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I quite like Afro Man. He's all right. I have to say, these policemen do look like, like the kind who would eat cake. I don't think those are machine guns, though, Carol. Not in the clip I'm looking at. Let me give you another clip because I know there's one where they're, they're big guns. Like you might know a lot more about. Guns oh, of course than I, I do. do. Of course I do. Under the pound cake, they did kick down that door. Very, very. Look at that gun. Oh, those are okay. Yeah, yeah. Those look like rifles or something, don't they? Okay, automatic rifles. But well, I don't know. If they're, I don't know if they're automatic. <laughs> <laughs> Me neither. I have no idea. Yes. Okay. You don't want one of those pointed at you, without a doubt. And and so so when Afro Man, getting back to the story, so when Afro Man puts out these videos, yeah. and maybe perhaps just to make sure they get the proper attention, he also announces his candidacy for the 2024 presidential election. <laughs> his campaign manager, Jason Savage, Cites inflation, the housing market, law enforcement, corruption, and unsurprisingly, legalizing marijuana as key issues. I think to John his McCarthy, when he ran to be U.S. president, he had similar sort of campaign ideals, didn't he? Yes, uh, it does well, seem it, know, it is a way to get publicity, isn't it? It's a shame we can't run to be president of the United States. No, no it's not. Actually, I wouldn't want to be. I wouldn't want not. to be. No, no, okay. no. they wouldn't no. want you either. No offense, but yeah. And just as an aside, in Ohio, cannabis is legal for medical use and is still illegal for recreational use. So, you know, that's the campaign. So, anywho, these videos get a lot of love. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Afro Man's also media comfy. So he is going around telling this story. And of course, this is a media story that people love. You know, the underdog treated unfairly, but, you know, and he pokes back you know, in the form of music, right? Yes. Uh, And he's happy to go on the air and talk about it. So, you know, you'll see him on Rolling Stone, NME, TMZ. I've got all kinds of links in the show notes if you're interested. And you'd think the story ends here, but it doesn't because there's a twist. Okay. What's happened? The cops are suing Afro Man for putting them in his videos without their permission. I knew it. Uh (laughs) Uh-huh. An ME reports that the four deputies, two sergeants and a detective claimed emotional distress, embarrassment, ridicule, loss of reputation and humiliation as a result of Afro Man's response to the raid. I can understand that. I appeared on the podcast once and I suffered emotional damage and embarrassment from that. So them appearing in Afro Man podcasts, uh, Afro Man music videos. I can understand it. It would actually, you can imagine a lot of people not taking them seriously out on the beat if they've been seeing an Afro Man video. Sure. But think of all the people that make songs out of people's speeches, right? For example, changing the words of what they say. We've seen that happen with loads of celebrities. Yes. We also see people that are not celebrities being, you know, hounded by media all over the place. If this was inside the New York Times, this happened. Would they show the videos? They probably wouldn't, wouldn't sing under the boardwalk to them. <laughs> they could hire Afro men. I'm sure he'd be available. The complaint says, uh, you know, they're seeking profits <laughs> that Foreman's making by using their images, including revenue from songs, music videos, and concert tickets on top of the promotion of his Afro man brand and merch proceeds. Surely the drifters or whoever wrote under the boardwalk are the ones who should first of all be asking for their share of the cash. Love it. (laughs) And they're also demanding a court injunction to take down all the videos and post, you know, using their faces. But it doesn't end there. No? Oh, for goodness. Almost. On March 22nd, Foreman revealed in an Instagram post that he intends to counter sue for the unlawful raid and money being stolen, as well as damage caused to his family, career and property. And what about the cake? 
And what about the frickin' cake? Is he soon over the cake? <laughs> it's a proper cake fight. <laughs> And uh, I'll try and keep tabs and report back if something utterly fascinating happens. Like the cop winning this case is interesting to me because I think it sets a really interesting precedent for non-police people being able to say, my face is being used in a deep fake and I want you to do something about that. I think you'll find it's called deep cake, not deep fake these days. Any company can say they're trustworthy, but with this week's sponsor, Drata, you can prove it. With over 14 frameworks, including SOC2, GDPR, HIPAA, and ISO 27001, Drata gets you audit ready for crucial security standards needed to scale your business. Automated controls, over 75 integrations, and 24-hour monitoring keeps your company in compliance without manual work. And with a new open API and plenty of customization, you can build your program your way. With over 360 five-star reviews, Drata is the highest-rated cloud compliance platform on G2. Countless security professionals from companies like Notion, Lemonade, and Bamboo HR have shared how crucial it's been to have Drata as their trusted compliance partner. So, listeners of Smashing Security, you can get 10% off Drata and waived implementation fees at smashingsecurity.com slash Drata. That's smashingsecurity.com slash D-R-A-T-A. Our sponsor Collide has some big news. If you're an Okta user, then you can get your entire fleet to 100% compliance. How? If a device isn't compliant, the user can't log into your cloud apps until they fix the problem. It's that simple. Collide patches one of the major holes in Zero Trust architecture, device compliance. Without Collide, IT struggles to solve basic problems like keeping everyone's OS and browser up to date. Insecure devices are logging into your company's apps, but there's nothing there to stop them. Collide is the only device trust solution that enforces compliance as part of authentication, and it's built to work seamlessly with Okta. The moment Collide's agents detect a problem, it alerts the user and gives them instructions to fix it. If they don't fix the problem within a set time, they're blocked. Collide's method means fewer support tickets, less frustration, and most importantly, 100% fleet compliance. Want to learn more? Of course you do. Visit collide.com slash smashing. That's collide.com slash smashing. And thanks to Collide for sponsoring the show. Our friends at Bitwarden have been busy this month adding some fab new features to their open source password management solution. Now, did you know that you can log into Bitwarden using a secondary device instead of your master password? Well, now you do. (laughs) Logging in with a device is a passwordless approach to authentication. It removes the need to enter your master password by sending authentication requests to other devices you're currently logged into for approval. With login for device, it can be initiated on the web vault, browser extension, desktop app, mobile app, and you can approve access on your mobile and desktop app version of Bitwarden. Very, very cool. And the Bitwarden team has hardened the security of its vaults, protecting new vaults with 600,000 iterations by default. And of course, existing accounts can also update themselves to the same level. These and many other great security features are incorporated all the time into Bitwarden, keeping your password secure from hackers. Learn more, try Bitwarden for yourself at bitwarden.com slash smashing. That's bitwarden.com slash smashing. And welcome back. And you join us at our favourite part of the show, the part of the show that we like to call Pick of the Week. Pick of the Week. Pick of the Week. Pick of the Week is the part of the show where everyone chooses something like. Could be a funny story, a book that they've read, a TV show, a movie, a record, a podcast, a website, or an app. Whatever they wish. It doesn't have to be security related necessarily. Better not be. Well, my pick of the week this week is not security related. In fact, I am indebted to one of our supporters. Dave Barker supports us on Patreon. Hey, Dave. Yeah, high five to you. Thanks to all of our supporters. If you're supporting us on Patreon or on Apple Podcasts, we really appreciate it. He suggested this pick of the week to me. And I checked it out and I thought, this is great. It is a thing called Atlas Obscura. 
Atlas Obscura. It's a website. It's also an app for Android and iOS. And it is a way to find cool places to visit that might not be in the usual tourist guide. So Dave told me that he was in Leeds and he he visited Winifred, which is a giant elephant mural hidden away in a car park. Ooh, interesting. And he also stumbled. <laughs> he was also in a field in Northumberland where he encountered a giant spoon sculpture. <laughs> And he says it's his go-to whenever he visits a new place to try and to tick more things off. So I thought, well, that sounds fun. I thought maybe I should give this go. So I went on to Atlas Obscure and I looked up Oxford. Yes. And uh, yeah, so I thought, well, let's 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 find something. And it one of the things it told me about was uh, a little story, a place I can go to go and check out called New College, right? So there's New College in Oxford. Founded in 1371, hence it's called New College, one of the new ones, 1371. And it has a great big dining hall with huge oak beams in its roof. This is what Atlas Obscura told me. And these beams are as large as two foot square. They're about 45 feet long. These are hulking great big oak beams holding up its roof, right? Mm -hmm. And about 100 years ago, which was 500 years since the college was founded, someone went up into the roof. And they found the beams were riddled with beetles, little bugs and things. And the beams need to be replaced, right? They're being eaten away by these beetles. But where do you find enormous oak beams? This is the problem New College was trying to answer. And so what happened was some bright spark at the university said, well, hang on, there might be some suitable oak trees on college land. So the college, the Oxford University, land up and down the country. Yeah, they own a lot of land. Yeah, and and they have these forests, and there are foresters who are looking after this land. So they called in this forester who hadn't, you know, had any reason to visit the college for many years, and they said to him, have you got any suitable oak we could use to repair this? And he sort of pulled his forelock, and he says, well, sir, uh, we was wondering when you'd be asking. And it turned out that when the college was founded in 1379... <laughs> A grove of oaks had been planted to replace the beams in the dining hall when they became all beetly, because oak beams always become beetly in the end. And this plan had passed down from one forester to the next for over 500 years, telling them, don't cut down them oaks. Those ones are for College Hall at New College, Oxford. So they've been, they've been growing these things for hundreds of years. And then someone came knocking, said, can we have some oaks, please? And so they were able to fix it. What a great job looking after those oaks. Can't be that hard, you know? can it? Um, I've actually dined in this dining hall. Oh, have you? Yes. I Ooh. have a, a number of friends who are lecturers and I've been invited. Uh, ah. They get dinners occasionally. And there was a high table in the whole nine yards. Ooh, la -dee da Yeah, well, you know. Anyway, it's, very, it's a very cool room as well. And this is very excellent pick of the week. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Dave, for telling us about this. It's absolutely wonderful. Really appreciate uh, being told about this. So check out Atlas Obscura on your smartphone or on the web. Links in the show notes. Excellent. Carol, what's your pick of the week? Well, mine's pretty cool too. Okay. My pick of the week is my new headphones for doing this show, another show. Oh, really? Oh, what have you got? Yes, I have purchased... Bayer Dynamic DT770 Pro headphones. <laughs> Don't you love these names? <laughs> so, so my old headphones were the Sony okay. MDRs, 7506, right? Yeah, that's what I have. Yeah. And they were kind of falling apart. I've had them a long time. I know you can replace components, mm -hmm. but I also found that they don't sit perfectly on my head. Like I know there's adjustments and stuff, and I've played around with them for years and years and years, but I still get noise bleed a little oh. bit. And uh, hmm. I, I find them quite tight as well on the head. Like I find I just get headaches. You know, if I wear headphones for a long time, it always gets a bit, you know, you get a bit close. But I find it was happening within an hour. Right. So I contacted one of my best pals, Vanya. Vanya, a friend of the show. It helped me select a new pair. And with his help, I ended up with these. Bear Dynamic DT770 Pros. 
Now, they're closed over the ear headphones, but they offer like exceptional isolation. Like you're really impressed with it right away as soon as you put them on. They have this kind of silver gray velour that makes them super comfortable to wear, but it really soundproofs you in. And there's like a spring steel headband that gives me like a secure fit. Mm. They're German. Uh. I've had them for a few weeks now. I love them. And they're about 150 bucks. I think I paid 90 quid in the UK for them. So about the same price as the MDRs. Well, but for someone like you who does lots of podcasts, it's important to have some good headphones. Totally, totally. And I know there's like headphones out there that are super expensive, but I really think these are great. So my pick of the week are the Bear Dynamic 7 Sending Pro. I'd even suggest, Graham, you take a look at them. I'm not being sponsored by them or anything like that, <laughs> obviously, um, but I really like them. So thank you for making a great product. I'm happy. And thanks for Vanya, right? Yeah. And Dave, Dave and Vanya, thank you guys for Pick of the Week this week. Brilliant. Well, that just about wraps up the show. Um, you can follow us on Twitter at Smash Insecurity. No G, Twitter and last have a G. And we also have a Mastodon account. Look for Smash Insecurity or visit smashinsecurity.com slash Mastodon to find us. And massive shout out to these episode sponsors, Collide, Drata and Bitwarden. And of course, to our wonderful Patreon community. It's thanks to them all that this show is free. For episode show notes, sponsorship info, guest list and the entire back catalogue of more than 315 episodes, check out smashingsecurity.com. Until next time. Cheerio. Bye bye. Bye bye. have a guest next week aren't we uh yeah i'm asking dave i haven't heard back yet not that dave not dave the patreon supporter dave the other day are we talking to the audience now no are we no okay i was just giving you something oh thanks that's that's your best that's your best (laughs) put in a link to these headphones i want to see them uh okay they're great man seriously i love them i'll stop recording hold on hold on hold on